I'm Wilda Richard, and my connection over here is that I came to work here in 1970, and my two daughters came to school here also. At first, I worked in uh, janitorial, in housekeeping, and I worked there for 35 years and retired. Stayed home two years, took care of my husband, who was ill. And I came back to buy some cookbooks for Christmas gifts. And I met Sister Leah down the hall. And she said, you're just the person I needed to see. So I said, why? So she said, I have a job for you. And I'm thinking, I'm not looking for a job. <laughs> so she said, it's just two hours. It's just to come and sit with the girls when they come from school because the people that was working in the boarding school then were the people that worked at the boys' school. So I told her, I said, I will, I'll think about it. But before I left, I told her, I said, I'll take it. And then I've been in a boarding school since 09, I think. This was an apartment right here, was where Mr. Joe Castile and his wife, Miss Lily May, worked, uh, lived here. Mr. Joe was a bus driver, and Miss Lily May worked in the cafeteria. And on the other side, Sister Guillo's mother lived there. And the center was a laundry room. I think everybody, pretty much everyone is gone, except for a few people. Well, from when I first started here, everybody's gone. My mother-in-law also worked here years ago. Cornelia Richard, she was born in 1909. And they washed here, so I'm almost sure that they probably washed in that same place. Yeah. I can remember uh, when they remodeled the place. Even before that, when they sandblasted the main building, that was a lot of work. Everything has changed because the nuns that were, were able to work lived on the third floor. The old nuns were in the infirmary on the second floor. I mean, all of that is classrooms now. And when I first came here, they had uh, parlors all over the place. They had sitting rooms for when parents came. And also in the administration building, a lot of the rooms in there were parlors. In the boarding school, there were tubs instead of showers. And it was kind of like a barracks. And what well, eight people had to share that because they had four girls to each room. They only had like curtains separating the girls. And even on the, in the elementary building, there were bad tubs on that side because they had dorms on that side also because they had kids coming here from fifth grade on up. And at one time we had so many boarders here, they were making uh, dorms out of classrooms. At one time, we had over 100 boarders. In the summertime when school would close, Sister Mouton always had a big retreat where she had all these ladies that would come and they would stay in the boarding school. And, and in the summertime, uh, my kids worked here too when it was almost time for school to open and we wasn't finished with the work. They would tell us we could get, you know, extra help. So my two girls came and they would work, help us to clean. And also my, my son came. The first time he came, he, Sister Morrow had him scraping a door. So that afternoon he's like, Mom, I'm not going back. Sister Morrow got me scraping the doors. I don't know nothing about scraping doors. But he would get up the next morning, he would come anyway. So the next day he said, Yo, Ma, she got me painting now. I don't know how to paint. I'm not going back. I wouldn't say anything. I just say to myself, Well, well. <laughs> and he would get up, come again. Then one day, Sister Moro brought her nephew here, and they were able to drive the old truck in the yard. I never heard I'm not going back anymore. <laughs> when my girls were here, I used to tell them, 
When my girls graduate, I'm out of here. Well, Sister Moro left more than once. Each time she left, she came back, she found me here. And I am still here today. While I was working with Sister Moro, I guess she was overwhelmed with her work. She had started me running errands for her. So I would run errands and I was taking the girls to the doctor. And one day I totaled the school car. <laughs> After that, my husband told me, he said, you're not going to drive them rich white people children anymore before you kill one of them. <laughs> so that was the end of my driving. <laughs>